Welcome to Circa. In this, the first part of a two-part series on hidden London, we will be talking about a city that seems to have all its major attractions out on full display. Not true. There's a whole world of hidden delights waiting for you in the UK capital. Underground, up on secluded rooftops and behind unmasked doors are some little-known experiences that Londoners have tried to keep for themselves. And as always, don't worry. There'll be maps, notes, and info on the places mentioned in this guide in the Circa app. So sit back, put your headphones on, and let's discover some special parts of London that only the locals know about. Just one rule, you've got to keep them to yourself. Circa. Love the world you live in, and we'll help you explore it. London, Paris, New York, Tokyo. This quartet wouldn't feel nearly as iconic without the first one, would it? London's one of those capital cities that doesn't really need an introduction. But, and here's the but, it's also got a sneaky side. One that's partly born out of post-wartime hush-hush security, or the need to breathe new life into abandoned rooftops, vaults, or underground tunnels that would otherwise be going to waste in this increasingly space-deprived city. Yep, it's official. But every in-your-face obvious landmark and historic gem, London has just as many under-the-radar oddities to keep your wanderlust peaked. Ready? Two steps back, London's nostalgic dance halls. My hometown is quite the paradox. It's a place where skyscrapers tower over 1,000-year-old farmers' markets, where Victorian back streets easily spill into neighborhoods filled with futuristic, Blade Runner-esque architecture. There's tons of places offering different activities, experiences, and adventures that might fly under your radar or over it if you didn't know any better. One of these unexpected experiences is born from London's nostalgic love of ballroom dancing. This particular pastime elevated post-World War II Britain's working class with the promise of music, community, and a little romance. By the 50s, London's ballrooms and dance halls were the second biggest entertainment industry after cinema. It was also estimated that 70% of couples during this era actually met on the dance floor, I mean, back then they didn't need Tinder or Bumble. They had swing. The craze slowed down in London by the 70s when disco music and a rising wave of feminism meant that women were hitting the dance floor without waiting to be asked. That said, I'm pleased to say that the city still has several tucked away, time-honoured ballrooms up its sleeve. Some keep it classic, with traditional ballroom bands and couples waltzing across wooden floors. Others celebrate a different kind of ballroom dancing. Adopted by London's LGBTQ plus community in the form of some kick-ass ballroom voguing. Question is, can you strike a pose? First, you'll want to head to Whitechapel. in London's East End. Whitechapel is one of those neighbourhoods that throws your senses into a tailspin. World-class curry houses line the main thoroughfares and emit the most belly-rumbling of flavours, while a lively community of Bangladeshis chat with even louder working-class cockneys. In the 19th century, Whitechapel was a thriving Jewish immigrant community. And it was also the stomping ground of one of London's most famed serial killers, Jack the Ripper. 
He was the suspect behind the Whitechapel murders, a grisly chapter in London's Victorian past that saw 11 prostitutes abducted and brutally murdered all over the East End between 1888 and 1891. He was never caught. Today, you can relive this bit of history on some fairly creepy Jack the Ripper walking tours. And if that's your thing, we've linked you to a good one in the notes. Luckily, there's some living history around here too. Tucked away on a short, narrow street called Grace's Alley, which you might never have noticed. The Wilton Music Hall is a beautifully restored 19th century performing arts space that's shabby on the outside and elegantly crumbling on the inside. Established by East End entrepreneur John Wilton, this hall provided the glamour, comfort and entertainment associated with the West End to East End working people. A sloping wooden floor, curved balcony and period features conjure all things Victoriana, while the lineup of acts will see you singing along with a cockney night of East London sin, or listening to award-winning jazz artists while you channel Fitzgerald flapper vibes. For sure, ghosts also come dancing here. Book your tickets in advance. We've linked you in the notes, don't worry. Another under-the-radar performance space to keep quiet about is in Brockley, south of the River Thames. Brockley sits in the borough of Lewisham and is at the throbbing heart of South London's super-diverse art scene. This quietly cool postcode rubs shoulders with the rapidly gentrifying Peckham. But it's still not an obvious choice for tourists, so when you visit, you'll get to do this part of London like a local. We're here for a place that's living proof you should not judge a book by its cover. The Rivoli Ballroom. The exterior is on the wrong side of Shabby 2, but inside is a time warp. 1950s decadence turned up to the max, a giant maple wood dance floor and the kind of red velvet draping and art deco fabulousness you'd hope to find in London's last existing wartime ballroom. The interiors caught the eye of Tina Turner, who shot the video for Private Dancer here as did Florence and the Machine and the White Stripes, who've also fallen for the venue's kitsch charm. A word of advice, the clientele here take their dance moves seriously. Expect to see plenty of quiffs, hairspray and lindy hop, and be prepared to get shown up on the dance floor. Oh, and while you're here, please don't skip the hidden boudoir and the gold bathroom. The Crypt on the Green in Clerkenwell has a die-hard following, but it's quite unknown as well, even by Londoners. A short five-minute walk from Farringdon Tube, this tucked-away venue has vaulted brick ceilings and a parquet floor, all the better to slide across with your tango partner, right? The echoey acoustics lend themselves perfectly to the band, ten of London's finest swing musicians, the Berkeley Square Society Band. White suits, bow ties and big brass horns. Even if you don't fancy yourself a big deal on the dance floor, these guys are welcome dancers of all levels. Dancers who lead or who follow, and dancers with or without a partner in crime. These tea dances, as they're known, were originally a Sunday afternoon affair organised by the LGBTQ community in New York during the 1950s and 1960s. Side note, don't worry about your moves. Even if you just want to go and watch a waltz or two from the sidelines, the atmosphere is magic. Last but not least, I can't tip you off about London's ballroom scene without pointing out its newest manifestation. Vogue Ballroom. Led by London-born voguing pioneer JJ Revlon, the Vogue ballroom craze actually originates from the sweaty dance halls of 20s Harlem in New York, but has shown up with a fresh energy in recent years, first becoming popular in London's massive LGBTQ community. To try out a Vogue class yourself, or watch the pros in JJ's crew perfect their dips, flicks, and highly stylized hand moves that Madonna used in her song, Vogue, head to the Prince of Peckham pub in Peckham to have a go yourself. The night, hosted by JJ, is called Let's Have a Kiki. 
Shy introverts might be terrified, but actually the mood is inclusive, upbeat, body positive and designed to get you throwing down those moves. The nearest Overland Tube is Peckham Rye, and entry is £10. So, now we've warmed up with a little dancing and dipped our toes in London's secret dancehall revival, it's time to head way down into another hush-hush aspect of the city's history. One that's got a mountain of stories, and quite possibly a ghost or two hanging around. We're going deep, underground, below the train tracks, to discover something that many locals haven't. London's Subterranean Secrets Arguably, the point of secrets is that they stay that way. And certainly for the safety of London city dwellers, what lies beneath ground level is largely off limits and as much a mystery as it ever was. London is proudly home to the world's oldest underground network, aka the Tube. It's been around since 1863 and carries about a billion passengers across the city each year. What most people don't know about the London Underground is that there's a whole other world sitting beneath these 270 stations, much of which is a secret and off limits since wartime. Many of these dark, creepy tunnels and secret passages were created by the Ministry of Defence and also British Telecom, who built telephone lines deep beneath the city. The Postmaster General's Tunnel, which runs under Whitehall, between government buildings, was built to protect key communications and machinery from a potential atom bomb during the Cold War. In the same area, there's also the Prime Minister's safe underground panic room. And allegedly, there's an entire secret bunker beneath the actual secret bunker, complete with a domed room that used to be the Prime Minister's wine cellar. This is where Winston Churchill and his key staff will wait out the worst of the bombings during World War II. It's not so easy to wander about beneath the city's wartime arteries at your own will. But every now and again, the London Transport Museum puts on a limited series of tours that will let you go deep underground into the lost parts of the Piccadilly Circus Tube. You'll clamber through tiny secret doors, creepy passageways and disused air shafts, finding tales of how people survived and even lived down here during wartime. Not for the faint of heart or claustrophobic. We've linked you to the tours in the show notes. If you're into wartime London history, there's a deeper dive into all the city's other World War II hotspots in our London Blitz episode. Let's head south of the Thames to the bustling Waterloo station, the largest end-of-the-line station in the UK. Keep your phones and your wallets close to you. It can be a hotspot for pickpockets. We're here for some hidden vaults, which we'll get to by going underground and into the depths of Waterloo's Leak Street tunnels. If you're coming here directly from the station, head out of Waterloo Station via exit one. Keep your eyes peeled for some stairs down to Leak Street and a sharp ramp that goes underground. As you descend, you'll encounter a kaleidoscopic world of graffiti covering every square inch of bare brickwork above your head and from every angle. But this isn't your average graffiti. Up until 2007, Waterloo Station served as the main terminus for the Eurostar coming in from Paris and Brussels. Leak Street was where the black cab drivers picked up all those passengers. When the Eurostar moved to King's Cross St Pancras Station, north of the River Thames in Camden, it soon became a dark, deserted alley. That is, until British graffiti artist Banksy spotted it for one of his vandal projects. In May 2008, the Cannes Festival was born. Cannes like spray paint cans turning this abandoned space into a vibrant maze of 3D art installations, stencils and public art. A gallery for some of the world's leading names in graffiti. Banksy managed to turn something dingy into a living, breathing, morphing piece of urban art. 
To this day, dozens of amateur and established artists meet up here and it's become the biggest legal street art space in London. The tunnels also offer some killer Asian and Polish street eats and the city's first board game cafe. You could stay here for hours, but there's more. Continue through these giant tunnels of graffiti until Leak Street tunnels merge into the next big railway arches. Now you've reached the vaults. This place is a must for art, theatre and dance lovers looking for something new. There are live shows all year round, but in January, the Vaults put on a festival that runs for two sellout months. Expect eight weeks of performances of every imaginable genre and style. Day of the Dead drag queens might show up, or perhaps a hidden jazz club or a cabaret spin-off of Shakespeare that immerses you into the performance. Don't worry, it's not scary. It's often hilarious and always LGBTQ plus friendly. Book ahead as tickets sell out fast. We've linked you to the show programme in the notes. London's least known treasure trove. Now, who's up for a bit of hidden bling? No, we're not heading to the Tower of London's crown jewels. That's far too obvious. Although we've given you the lowdown on this major London attraction in our London Play Here episode. We're heading to a part of town that many might write off as actually a bit of a cultural black hole, Holborn and Chancery Lane. But in fact, there are some special things here, if you know where to look. To the east of the shopping hub that is Oxford Circus, Chancery Lane was built sometime around 1160 by the Knights Templar on land they owned. New Street, which is what it was first called, was built as a route between their old headquarters in Holborn and their new temple. Not long after, Henry III founded the Domus Conversorum on New Street, which occupies a bleak place in the history of Jewish persecution. It was England's principal house of indoctrination, where Jews were separated from their communities, forced to renounce their faith, and slowly converted into Christianity. This thoroughfare has gone through a lot politically since then. Today, you'll probably find it on the bustling, busy side, filled with professionals, dressed in fine tailoring, and occasionally robes and curly wigs. This is where the city's concentration of legal professionals, lawyers and judges work. We're here in Chancery Lane to take a peek at the London's Inns of Court. There are four separate inns, Gray's Inn, Lincoln's Inn, Inn Temple, and Middle Temple. Each one offers a different and grandiose spin on Georgian, Regency, Baroque, and Gothic architecture, and all of them have immaculate gardens surrounding them. If you fancy taking a look between the buildings, you'll discover picturesque squares and glorious gardens. And if you want to learn about the legal side of London in depth, we've linked you to a great legal tool in the show notes. Then there's the Grade 2 listed Law Society Hall building, towards the south end of Chancery Lane. It's on the National Heritage List of buildings in the United Kingdom and cuts an austere look with strong Grecian detailing and portico pillars. But we're not here for judge or jury. We're heading underneath these famous historic buildings into a hidden treasure trove. the Chancery Lane Silver Vaults. These vaults originally opened in 1885 as the Chancery Lane safe deposit, but soon became a secure selling place for London's silver and jewellery dealers. Located in an unassuming building at number 53 Chancery Lane, once inside the Silver Vaults, the downstairs entrance has a kind of Fort Knox style safe door, which is maybe about three feet thick. You'd think it might be a touch intimidating, but you're welcome to make your way through this subterranean maze of vault doors that lead you through about 30 specialist silver shops shimmering with exquisite antiques, modern silver and jewels dating back from the early 1600s right up to the present day. Most of the sellers down here are third or fourth generation family dealers, so expect lots of friendly banter and fascinating historic anecdotes. Whether you're here just to be stunned 
or to splurge on something extraordinary. Thanks for listening to part one of our Hidden London episode. In part two, we'll look at what's hidden right above your head. We'll visit a secret naval college and look at and taste London's ongoing obsession with the good old speakeasy, plus much more. We'll see you in part two. Circa. Love the world you live in and we'll help you explore it.